We're glad to know that you're still there and watching Breakfast on uh, Plus TV. Right now, it's time to look at the headlines on our national dailies. And we're glad to be joined by a legal practitioner uh, that will be talking about these headlines uh, in the person of Mr. Tunde Kola Wale. Mr. Kola Wale, good morning and welcome to the show. Hello, Tunde. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Yes, always a pleasure. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of headlines, uh, so we'll just take them as they come. We'll begin with Punch, and if you're there, we'll take one headline at a time. So we begin with Punch newspaper, and Punch newspaper uh, leads with the story, um, or has the story, 100 military uh, generals may be retired. Let's begin from there. 100 military generals may be retired. Federal government votes 24 billion for National Assembly members accommodation and Naira closes at uh, 756 Naira per dollar. So let's begin with the military um, officers or generals that may be retired now. What's your take? Well, um, that has always been the story of our life as Nigeria. Every time a new government comes into power, they tend to appoint to their favorite to head most of these security organizations, and even most of the parastatas and ministry. And that has only led to the retirement of other persons who may be senior to the favorite that has been appointed to some of these positions. You are an idol know training a general of becoming even a commissioner of police or DIG of police is not a joke. It takes um, a lot. So when you sacrifice the careers of these people, you spend a lot of money to train and to bring up. It is the nation that is um, uh, going to pay for it or that is at a law. That is why I've always believed it is better to always appoint the most senior career person in some of these security agencies, for starters and what have you, to help the organization when another person is made to step down. And not necessarily we begin to continue to appoint our favorite to help some of these places. So it doesn't all go well for us. And the uh, kind of uh, undermine the entry to call that exists in some of these uh, places. Oh, okay. Uh, well, but uh, some people are thinking that uh, it is going to uh, move or make the security um, apartheid uh, in Nigeria to be better because according to the story of Business Day, high expectations as Tinubu assembles security team. So people are seeing this as uh, something good but you don't see it as anything good, or at least uh, it's not as good as people are talking? Well, that has been uh, what has really happened, like I earlier on said. But if what has been happening is done at the detriment of Nigeria, I'm not too sure that it's good for I have read the TV of all the people that have been appointed to some of these places. And I can tell you, they are more than qualified. But if you have to sacrifice the career of the only ministry officers or police chief just to appoint your favorite or somebody who thinks going to be lawyer to you, I'm not too sure that you promote the participant and encourage the rank and file as to the, that you can also be their career when in uh, mm. Okay, uh, let's move to uh, an, another issue. We may, we may have to revisit that if there is time for us to talk about it. But on the, no punch, on the punch as well, we, we have federal government votes $24 billion uh, uh, Naira for National Assembly members' accommodation. I was trying to just do a simple mathematics. In the... the House of, in the Senate, we have 109 senators, and then we have uh, 360 uh, rep members. That makes a total of 469. So on the average, everybody will be getting like 51.17 million naira for accommodation. 
How does that strike you? It's just uh, all Nigerians, all most Nigerians, have never eaten the aversion to the two amount of money that is being used to maintain the the National Assembly, the Senators, the House of Representatives. And when you also take them to the state level, you will know that it's going to be a political amount of money that you believe that they have been using to run this democracy. That is the reason why you find that a lot of people have been clamoring that we should reduce the number of people in the National Assembly and also kind of collapse the House of Representatives and the Senate into a unicameral legislature so that we can reduce the force. So, 51 million is a lot of money, especially in this unfair time, which could be judicially used in some other places. Furthermore, you will remember that it's been said, although in the past era, most of the houses that were built for the Liberal National Assembly were sold out to either the National Assembly of the Poor or some other party, so that the nation will no longer require to be funded the accommodation of uh, politicians and especially people in the National Assembly. So if that has been done in the past, why are we going back on the policy that we have made to ensure that the cost of running the people in the National Assembly or the cost of providing accommodation for the people in the National Assembly is passed directly to the legislators themselves? In most parts of the world, it is from their salary that the people in the National Assembly will be providing accommodation for themselves and not for the people to be renting uh, accommodation for, for these people. Whichever way we look at it, uh, this democracy is a very, very expensive thing. And don't forget that accommodation is just one of the simple components of maintaining the legal presidential assembly. You see, I could provide very good and so many other ancillary services to make them comfortable, so to say. Mm. That's serious. Uh, and some of these people are returning. Some of these people are, exactly. uh, you know, they live in Abuja already and all that. Exactly. Uh, and then they are voting this month. This is not furniture allowance. This is not wardrobe allowance. This is not exactly. uh, uh, hardship allowance. This is exactly. not newspaper exactly. allowance and all those exactly. allowances that they have. So just for accommodation, exactly. 51 million naira. Uh, oh, this is this is serious. This is really serious. Mm -hmm. So, for a, a, a population of 469, less than 500 people, uh, they are having exactly. four, 24 billion naira for accommodation. That's that's nice. Okay, um, naira. A lot of things have also gone on in the financial sector. Uh, you know, uh, where so many windows were collapsed into only the I and E window, and uh, naira is now free for all, as, as it were. Uh, but the Naira is closing in the official window, which is like the only window right now, uh, at a, um, a rate of 756 Naira to the dollar. Is this policy really going to help us better than the former one, where, where it was regulated, uh, and there was, there was a official rate and there was a black market rate? Is this policy better in any way? Ordinarily, he should be able to help us. I suspect that the reason why the new regime has insisted on this policy is to make sure that the people in the central bank are not taking this money into the black market and selling it for the benefit of themselves. That might be the reason why the new policy has insisted. But when you look all over the world, or in most third world countries, it is really difficult to shut down the black market completely. Why is it difficult? It is difficult because the government or the state or the CBM or most of these places will not be able to provide a non hard currency for both the individual and businesses to be able to transact business abroad. 
So, because of the gap that we are not people had to add currency for maybe whether the business that they do abroad or the income that they have from abroad. We are very little to the black market and then begin to spend it to those who find it difficult to access the official channel. And that has been the reason why this, these three parties have always been there. So, we probably will require to give the government a little more time as they consolidate or fine tune this policy that they have now implemented. But if you ask me my opinion, I doubt it whether it will ever work because the term, the, I mean, the value of the quality is depending on a number of factors. One is the productive capacity, the GDP of the country. Nigeria is not producing much today. The oil, which we used to depend on, is also not selling as much as should be selling the national market. We are also not pumping out as much as we need to pump out. And of course, the rest of them, the stealing of the oil, is also a factor. So, but you don't let us um, uh, begin to jump into confusion. The policy is just a few weeks old. Let us pray and hope that it will work for the benefit of all of us. Because there is already too much hardship in the land. Inflation is a canopy war now. And the cost of uh, food, products, services are going up on a daily basis. So, let's pray that the policy will work. Okay, well, well, we'll be praying because if you say the policy is just uh, a few weeks old and all yeah. that, um, there are some people in these few weeks that have lost their jobs. There are some people who have of lost course. their lives. There are some people who have lost so much because of the policies okay. that are coming up. And mm. one of these policies also, like we have on the Nature News a newspaper, uh, fuel subsidy that has been removed. Yes, we knew that it was a long time coming that the fuel subsidy will be removed and people are quarreling uh, not with the removal but with the uh, what was put in place or not put in place uh, to ameliorate the sufferings of the people if eventually it uh, uh, comes to, to happen. Now fuel subsidy, six companies have uh, been given approval to import uh, fuel or petrol into the country. One of these companies is the Dangote <laughs> Company. And Dangote Refinery was commissioned on the 22nd, I think, of uh, last month as, you know, having been completed or at least 95% complete. Now, these six companies have been given licenses to import fuel. Some people were saying the Dangote Refinery was going to kickstart maybe in 2024 and everybody was like, eh, the company has been commissioned already and we are going to expect uh, production and sale maybe in July. <clears throat> we are almost in July and now they are securing a license to import fuel. So what, is, well, what do you think about that? Um, with regards to the Dangote Refinery, if the information at my own disposal is true, that refinery may not be able to provide me to produce well until the year 2025. What I've been completed and what I have been told is that um, the fertilizer production uh, plan of uh, Dangote Refinery has been completed. And some other, because you know when you are doing refinery, mm. there are so many byproducts yeah. that you can produce from the refinery. Mm. The major thing which is production of um, petrol, diesel, is never likely to take off until the year 2025. So Nigeria is going to continue to import oil, as it has been doing over the years. And even when that water begins to produce the petroleum product, it is doubtful whether it's going to be cheaper uh, in terms of uh, the rate at which we are going to be buying the cost. Then what will be buying input raw material in dollars at the international market rate. And if it buys its input at the international market rate, 
It is never that you are going to tell me at the rate in which uh, the Naira uh, is uh, doing. Why, why? The local market. Just a moment, let me but understand. Why Why would he it's need to buy? It's a very complex uh, issue. Why would Furthermore, he... Tunde, just a don't moment. Don't forget. Okay. Yes. Why would he not need to buy raw materials if he begins to produce uh, uh, petroleum in Nigeria? Why would he not need to buy the raw materials, let's say the crude oil, in dollars from Nigeria? Well, the Nigerian government is never likely to sell for that bottle. Uh, the, the international rate as it is spending. I should think. That is um, what is done all over the world. Because if you sell to that water at a rate at which the product is not being sold at the international market, that means they are subsidizing that water. It means they are subsidizing the input that that water is going to be using to produce the petroleum product. So, if that is the case, why are you now removing first of TV and saying, it's not right to so continue to subsidize the petroleum product in the country. So that is um, uh, one of the reasons I think they will not want to sell at the local rate or at the rate in which uh, it is being produced uh, solely in Nigeria. Yeah, right. Okay. It gives us a, a feeling that we've been hoodwinked because some of the things that uh, some of the conditions that were given as the reasons for removing fuel subsidy is that uh, now we are going to have local production. Dangote refinery is coming and then other private firms will come up and begin to uh, produce this thing. Now you remove fuel subsidy, which is basically petrol subsidy, and then you're producing fertilizer in a refinery that we thought would be uh, producing uh, petrol for the people's consumption. Now it is fertilizer, and there was no lie. The refinery, uh, some parts of it were were completed, but it was not what we expected in Nigeria. So we've been hoodwinked, as it were. But let's move from there because our time is running out. And touch um, one or two more things. Uh, we've just heard from the from this day. Uh, there's a headline there that the number of Nigerians moving to Canada hits nine-year high, like. For the past nine years, this is the time that people have moved more than any other time. Even when some people say, that, that's on business day. Okay, so even when people are saying that things are going to get better, does it mean that people are still losing hope even more?